uh, dear colleagues. Uh, today I chose a topic called uh, precision medicine, which is uh, very popular in medical world at the moment. And we are on the way of a personalized healthcare with precision medicine. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, if we define precision medicine, we mean uh, precision medicine is a way healthcare providers uh, uh, can and sorry, uh, can you uh, correct the uh, the cameras, please? The ah yes, uh, precision medicine is a way uh, of healthcare providers can offer a pl and plan specific care for their patients based on the person's genes or the genes in their cancer cells. Next, next slide. So precision medicine looks at uh, how uh, a specific gene change or gene mutation might affect a person's risk of getting a certain cancer or if they already have uh, cancer, uh, how their genes or genes in their cancer cells might affect uh, treatment. Next slide. So personalized medicine in cancer requires identification of genetic uh, alterations that drive carcinogenesis and treatment with drugs that can effectively inhibit the function of genetic alterations. For example, a mutated gene uh, in this uh, pair has changed uh, the DNA uh, DNA translation or RNA translation of the gene so that uh, a cancer, a driving uh, mutation can cause uh, a cancer. Yes. So what is the current definition? Uh, use of therapeutic agents that target any biological abnormality that is associated with carcinogenesis, including immunotherapy. <clears throat> so we, we want to hit the target uh, with that gene uh, if we produce a specific drug uh, for that uh, mutation, mutated gene. So mutations can be inherited uh, from one uh, or both parents. This is called germline mutations. So germline testing is gaining importance. Uh, for example, PARP inhibitors, uh, if we uh, uh, detect germline uh, uh, mutation in the uh, DNA, uh, we can give uh, PARP inhibitors to prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, uh, for example, uh, breast cancer, or even prostate cancer. So we can divide uh, mutations into two different uh, forms. One is germline mutation, which is inherited in our normal bodies, uh, normal cells in our body. And we have also somatic mutations, uh, which is only uh, present uh, in our tumor cells. So what did, what did that, that mean? So somatic mutation, for example, a normal uh, lung uh, cell can be mutated uh, so that lung cancer uh, cell uh, can, can be produced. For example, a normal islet cell uh, in our uh, the pancreatic uh, cell, uh, if there is a mutation uh, uh, in the uh, uh, cell of uh, pancreas, a diabetic islet cell can be produced. So how genom genomic alterations cause cancer? When genes are altered or mutated, the, the resulting proteins produced can have altered sequence, structure, or function. Sometimes no protein or complete proteins are made, resulting in dysfunction in the pathways that regulate cells, growth, division, and death, for example, which, which causes cancer. So cancer is a dynamic phenomenon uh, it is called caused by accumulation of gen genomic uh, alterations. It starts with fertilized egg, uh, continues with gestation, infancy, and then ultimately uh, a lot of uh, mutations uh, accumulate. For example, uh, if you, when you, when you, uh, as you see, the, uh, the red circles are uh, <clears throat> uh, somatic mutations uh, and the gray circles are uh, uh, the other mutations, so when they accumulate, uh, uh, a, a cancer can occur. So this is called genomic instability. So we have to understand all the genomic alterations. Uh, all cancers arise as a result of changes in the DNA of cancer cells, though not all of these uh, changes present in a cancer 
would have been involved in its development. These are called passenger mutations. We have many, many passenger mutations. Uh, as you see in this slide, maybe 10,000 passenger mutations. But in one specific cancer, in one specific cancer, for example, in lung cancer, we see only five to 10 biologically relevant alterations. So uh, these are called uh, driver mutations that can cause uh, the actual cancer. So one of the, one of, or two of the driver mutations can also be actionable, which means we can target this mutation uh, with a specific drug uh, so that we can treat the patient. Sometimes uh, a cure can occur. So how do we test? How do we test all these mutations? Uh, we have uh, different types of mutations. So we have to test all these mutations. For example, one is base substitution, uh, the other is insertion and deletion mutations, and one is copy number alterations, and the other is rearrangement or gene fusions. So the genomic alterations uh, driving a tumor growth uh, is depicted in this uh, diagram, in this uh, slide. For example, in uh, a base substitution in EGFR gene can cause an EGFR mutation uh, so a specific EGFR mutated lung cancer. For example, another one is EGFR uh, lysin 858R mutation or L861Q uh, mutation. So this is another type of lung tumor that, uh, that we can target with a specific drug, uh, which is now in the market. Or another one is BRAF, uh, BRAF mutation, which is also a very specific mutation that can be detected in uh, with next generation sequencing methods. So this is another example, which is called an insertion and deletion mutations. For example, in EGFR exon 19 deletions in lung cancer is actionable. We can target this mutation with a specific drug called arotinib and gefitinib. So sometimes we see copy number alterations if there is a copy number, number alteration, for example, in breast cancer, which is called HER2 amplification, that, that we, we can test this with different methods, also with next generation sequencing methods. So we can give Herceptin to breast cancer. So this is called, uh, literally, this is called uh, a tailored medicine or precision medicine. So rearrangement mutation or gene fusions is another example. For example, red fusions in lung cancer or thyroid cancer can be targeted with a very, very new uh, drug, which is, uh, which is uh, in the market very recently. <clears throat> so what is the key learnings uh, up to now? Cancer is a disease of the genome and the result of the accumulation of genomic alteration over time. The four different classes of genomic alterations that I have just explained is associated with driving tumor growth are base substitutions, insertions and deletions, copy number alterations and rearrangements. So you see here, uh, we uh, test all these uh, mutations uh, with different uh, types of methods, with uh, different uh, methods. For example, immunohistochemistry, FISH, uh, PCR, Sanger method, uh, or NGS-based hotspot testing or hybrid capture. And uh, finally, uh, uh, whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing methods. So NGS technologies have enabled comprehensive genomic profiling. So what is, what is the advantage of this? So this can be done very quickly. For example, uh, an NGS test result can uh, have a turnaround time uh, around one week or two weeks up to now, and which is quite cheap according to the previous ones. So, so are we ready to say goodbye to one size fits all cancer treatments like chemotherapy or radiotherapy or hormones? Uh, so maybe yes, because precision oncology paradigm is shifting now our understanding of cancer treatments completely. So cancer cell, we have a cancer cell, even single cancer cell can be, can be uh, tested with genomic analysis and we can uh, have different variants like HER2, P53, MEK1, EGFR or FGFR1. So we have many, many drugs specifically to these mutations. 
So precision medicine in cancer is being used for certain cancers that help now uh, what tests and treatment are best, identify who might be at high risk for cancer. So patient A with mutation A can be treated with drug A. Patient B with mutation B can be treated with drug B. So doctors might use precision medicine to help them prevent some type of cancer, find certain cancers early, diagnose a specific type of cancer correctly, choose what treatment options are best, and evaluate how treatment is working. Incorporation of levels of evidence into variant reporting clinical practice. So one, one recent, uh, in, one, in recent years, molecular profile is ordered as standard of care or for clinical trials. So we can direct our patients according to mutations to different kinds of clinical trials, which are run in, in, in Turkey, also in Europe, and also in Ukraine, I have seen uh, in one report, uh, you have uh, uh, running a lot of clinical trials in your country. Interpretation of molecular profile. So expert oncologists in precision medicine uh, are required, specialized team of molecular biologists. So selection and treatment on clinical trials is based on recommendation of tumor molecular board, clinical trial availability, patient preference and eligibility and study sponsor and insurance approval. So why now? Because the time is right, because sequencing of human genome is possible, improved technologies for biomedical analysis like biostatistics or, or bioanalytics, new tools for using large data sets. This is called big data. So we can, uh, uh, we can study uh, this big uh, tool uh, with bioinformatics very quickly. So precision oncology has uh, changed the survival of cancer patients. For example, once uh, with chemotherapy, when the survival of metastatic breast cancer it was around 12, 12 months or 15 months now, with chemotherapy plus uh, trastuzumab, a smart drug, uh, the uh, uh, survival now increased more than two years. Another example is Gleevec. For example, with chemotherapy, CML uh, was a deadly disease. Now there is a Gleevec, which is a smart drug. Uh, even cure is possible in chronic myelogenous leukemia. So what is the challenges in precision oncology? We have tumor heterogeneity. So when we sample one tumor uh, from one side, maybe some mutations, uh, is not there. Maybe if we sample the tumor again, or if we sample another organ, another metastasis, uh, the tumor uh, can, uh, the, the mutations can, can, can change. So we can hurdle these problems with now a liquid biopsies. We can draw blood and we can uh, see different kinds of mutations in the circulation, in the circulating uh, DNA of the tumors, which is called cell-free uh, DNA. So precision oncology, in spite of challenges, is very, very popular, very important. And it, I think this is the future of uh, modern medicine, modern cancer treatment. So molecular profiling, prognostic markers, markers predictive of drug sensitivity and resistance can also be detected. So markers predictive of adverse events can also be detected with one report. So a typical precision oncology workflow is in day one, uh, when a patient visits a clinic, uh, we take the biopsy uh, in two to four days. Pathology review is up to five days. Sample preparation in the sixth day and molecular analysis uh, in eight day. Bioinformatics, nine or 12, uh, 11 days. Molecular tumor, bo tumor board should be uh, gathered uh, in, the, in the second week. And maybe in the third week, results and treatment can start. So molecular tumor board uh, consists of multi-institutional participants like medical oncologists, uh, surgical oncologists, bioinformatician, uh, pathologists, radiologists, radiation oncologists, and maybe geneticists. So uh, we have different kinds of trials running in at medical at the moment, uh, of course, in different, uh, <clears throat> uh, different uh, areas of the world. So an umbrella trial uh, is an important trial. In one type of cancer, we can detect different kinds of mutations and we can test several drugs at the same time in the same uh, trial. 
Another trial called BASKET trial, multiple types of cancer can be tested simultaneously if there is one common genetic mutation and we can test one single drug. So uh, if we, uh, if we uh, uh, broad, broaden our ideas, for example, if we uh, want to understand how all these uh, precision medicine works, we have to analyze uh, meta-analysis. So uh, if we, uh, for example, if you look at this paper from, Mar uh, from Maria Schwarterle, yes, this is a phase two clinical trial. We see with precision uh, medicine, yes, next slide, please. With precision medicine, with personalized medicine, uh, if there is a tool, tool analysis, a meta-analysis, you see the response rate is much higher uh, than the conventional uh, personalized medicine, when you, uh, if you see uh, on the left-hand side. So in the middle, you'll see the medium progression-free survival of cancers. If you treat the patient pers personally, personalized medicine, uh, you see uh, much better than the not uh, personalized one. And in the median overall survival on the right-hand side, you see uh, a far better uh, outcome with personalized medicine. So if you see the Kaplan-Meier curve, which is a survival curve here, the, the traditional, uh, the green one uh, is uh, worse than the, uh, the, the, the uh, red colored uh, curve, which is the targeted, uh, targeted treatment. So overall survival is also uh, far better than the standard chemotherapy. If you treat our patients with targeted cancer therapy, you see uh, up to double uh, double uh, survival. So uh, we divide uh, our results into different tier, like tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four. And so tier one is very of strong clinical significance. So we see a very good result, for example, if there is a drug and very good outcome, we, we say this is a tier one. So tier two is variant of potential clinical significance. We treat our patients, maybe not FDA approved, but this is FDA approved uh, with different types of cancer, but we can still uh, treat the patient with that drug. So for example, lung cancer mutation, uh, there are many different types of uh, mutations in lung cancer, like KRAS, EGFR, and uh, many rare uh, mutations. But these mutations are very, very good uh, mutations for patients. They can, they can be targeted very easily with smart drugs, and we can have very good uh, outcome. For example, this is a BRAF mutation in a patient with uh, sal salivary cancer. You see here on the left-hand side, you see the uh, cancer, which is in, in dark color. The black ones are all uh, cancer uh, on the upper uh, body. So after you treat with a drug, with a smart drug called demorafenib, the patients, uh, all the lesions uh, are vanished. So how can the cancer patient be tested? So this is called, for example, uh, Foundation 1 CDX. This is a commercial test from Roche company. A solid tumor can be tested easily, as I uh, explained in previous slides. All solid tumors can be tested. So there is a companion diagnostic indications, for example, for lung cancer, EGFR testing, or uh, ALK testing, or BRAF testing, they are, they are all uh, tested at the same time in single one in, in, in a single test. So this is a sample test. For example, uh, this is ordered uh, by a physician. Uh, an EGFR uh, mutation uh, has been uh, found, and we can treat this EGFR mutation with four different types of drugs called uh, afatinib, kefitinib, osimertinib, or erlotinib. So we have to choose one of these drugs. These are all FDA approved therapeutic options. Uh, we can also find different, different kinds of uh, information from the same test. For example, uh, if the uh, patient has microsatellite instead unstable, we can choose another drug. Or if the tumor uh, has a high mutation burden, we can choose another drug, which are all FDA approved. 
For example, this is a patient with high tumor mutational burden with 24 mutations per megabase. So we can choose different kinds of uh, immunotherapies called atezolizumab, durvalumab, or pembrolizumab. So what is on the horizon? So comprehensive assessment of cancer is the future. So we, we, we test the patient with DNA sequencing. We can find epigenetic alterations. Uh, we can uh, see microRNA expression, RNAs with RNA sequencing. And we, we can also do multiplex immunohistochemistry uh, staining at the same time with the same sample uh, without sacrificing our sample tissue. And finally, we can test the blood with the circulating DNAs and we can uh, see our patients uh, outcome dynamically. For example, after the patient progresses on one drug, we can still uh, test the patient uh, in their blood uh, with genomic, different kinds of genomic mutations. So I, want, I wanted to give you my select cases. For example, this patient was a 58-year-old 58, 58 man with, with, diagnosed with lung adenocarcinoma and liver metastasis. So conventional molecular investigations were all negative with the old methods. So after two cycles of cisplatin and gemcitabine, he refused further chemotherapy. So a PET CT revealed brain progressing bone, lymph nodes, and liver metastasis. So I ordered a comprehensive genomic uh, screening with this patient. So we found uh, different kinds of genomic alterations in this patient. For example, one is ROS1 fusion. So I could, I could give this patient uh, a smart drug called uh, <clears throat> arlutinib or gefitinib. Here you see, so for ROS1 for Ross patient, uh, I can give serotinib or chrysotinib to this patient. So this is the detailed explanation of why I can give this smart drug to that patient. Yes, we can skip. So this is another patient, a 37 year old woman with triple negative breast cancer. Yes. So this patient also had TP53 mutation, which, which we have don't uh, uh, any smart drug for that patient, but this TP53 mutation uh, give us a very good idea about the prognosis of the patient. So how uh, the patient is progresses, how serious uh, the patient has uh, his tumor, her tumor. Yeah, T this is the typical report of T TP53. This is another patient, a 30 year old woman with gastric mass and liver metastasis. Endoscopic biopsy was an adenocarcinoma. This patient actually had a biliary tract carcinoma. So this patient has EGFR amplification and ERP2 amplification. So I can give this patient, I could have given this patient uh, different kinds of treatment bus, but I have, I have given this patient a chastuzumab because we detected ERP2 amplification. The patient responded well to cisplatin, capecitabine, and trastuzumab, which is a tailored drug, uh, in the, uh, a smart drug for precision medicine. <clears throat> so another patient, 58-year-old Turkish man with stage 3 left lung adenocancer cancer, received chemoradiation between November 2017 and 2000, uh, 2008, January. 2018, he was a 30 pack year current smoker when he developed bone metastasis and a new lesion in the contralateral lung. Pemetrex said carboplatin and bevacizumab combination was started. And we ordered Foundation 1 DCX test for this patient. And the patient had NF1 uh, mutation, which is associated with a smart drug called, yes, trametinib or covimetinib. So trametinib was an FDA approved drug for this patient. And also the patient had the high tumor mutational burden, which is associated with a, a very good drug called Avelumab. <clears throat> yes, we can skip all these. This is another woman called 65 year old Libyan woman. 
Also, we had uh, in this patient, we had P10 abnormality. Yes, we can see the report. P10 abnormality, tumor mutation low, microsatellite instability stable. And the patient can be treated with Evarolumus and Camsulolumus with P10 mutation. So another uh, patient, a Libyan patient, 70 year old. This uh, patient had also uh, lung cancer with metastatic. This patient also had NRAS mutation with trametinib. Trametinib was a smart drug for that patient. Yes, we can continue. Yeah, we can skip all these. Yeah, this 58-year-old uh, non-smoker man presented with right-sided pleural effusion. When he was diagnosed with lung adenoid cancer from the effusion, we staged the patient as stage four lung cancer and we requested foundation one DCX test. So the patient had EGFR mutation, which I uh, taught before. So we can give the patient osimertinib. So I, I, had, I gave this patient osimertinib for EGFR mutation. The patient's lung, uh, when you, uh, if you see on the right, with the arrow, a huge lung uh, mass with pleural effusion. So after two months, after two months with, with a smart drug called anti-EGFR. Yes. After two months supply of osimertinib, the patient's uh, mass disappeared as you see in this slide. 